Hello and welcome to the 2016 Diesel Power Challenge presented by XDP. We begin here at Bandemir with the trailer towing obstacle course. This is one of the most fun events of the entire competition. You got all those orange cones out there. You get an 11,000 pound trailer hooked to the back of your truck. You got to hustle the thing through the course as quickly as possible. There's turning, there's backing up, and there's always a lot of orange cones lying dead on their side by the time we're done. Before we move on with that, let's take a look back at what happened yesterday at ATS Diesel Performance. That's where Ray McClellan showed up with his Cummins-powered Ram and laid him all the waste. The big numbers put down by that truck on both the horsepower and torque side got him the dyno win. We then ran our fuel economy challenge on those same dyno rollers, a simulated driving experience that Neil Torley dominated. The most fuel efficient truck, he won fuel economy. It was also Neil Torley that got himself into the first thrash of the event. Torley and his crew ripped the transmission out of this truck, basically rebuilt it that afternoon and plugged it back in to get it ready for today. Unfortunately, there was a competitor that will not continue on in the contest, and that is Jake Patterson. He suffered a broken piston during his dyno pulls. It is catastrophically damaged, and that truck will not be part of the trailer towing obstacle course, or, we think, the rest of the event. So Kelsey F is off the starting line. Now, one of the things that maybe gets uh, not as much attention during the trailer towing obstacle course is the fact that you have to have a truck that's functional really well at low RPM to get this weight moving. So Kelsey kind of methodically working her way back through that long backing section. Always better to take your time through this thing and not panic. When you start hitting cones, the penalties rack up quick. A couple of alterations from years past. They have moved, they, meaning the Diesel Power Magazine staff, has moved this gate in the back of the course farther back. So you can see Kelsey setting herself up absolutely perfectly there. She's going to drive almost straight through that thing. Now this is the higher speed portion of the course. She's going to come through now the slalom portion of the chicane. She's going to come to one side. Nice. Working her way through there now. Very nicely done there by Kelsey Epps. Now she's going to come to a stop in the box. This is where the rubber meets the road. This 90 degree backing movement has thrown more people off over the years than nearly anybody else. Now can she put it back at the stop box without touching any cones? The run ends when the front of the trailer, the front of the actual cargo portion of the trailer, crosses the white line and it looks like we may have... She's in there. Wow, nice run by Kelsey Epps. So the next truck on course belongs to Travis Kohler. Kohler going to lead the starting line. Now you got to remember Kohler has that small variable geometry turbo in this truck and that's going to help him get the weight moving. He's through that first turn, squares himself up nicely. And again, this is not a horsepower game out here, so this is one of the events where he is really on pretty even footing with everybody else. Yes, it helps if you got some extra oomph to get the acceleration going, but the reality is smoothness and skill are the name of the game out here in the trailer towing obstacle course, not brute force. Nicely done by Travis right here, backing through that entire column of cones, not touching anything. You can see him looking in the mirrors. Now he's going to set himself up to get that thing going in the right direction, and he does a fine job of that. Kohler makes a beautiful transition there, kicks the truck into first gear and into drive, and he's gone. Again, he comes through the high-speed portion now, lays on the throttle a little bit, comes through the chicane. Is he going to be clean? I don't see any orange cones flying quite yet. That was close coming through there. Now he's going to dip the nose in here to the stop box, and here it comes, the 90-degree backup. This is the make him or break a moment, and right now he's going to try to rotate that thing. Has he waited too long to turn in? It might. Ooh, it appears he might have. Here comes the trailer working its way across, but is he at a good enough angle? And is he going to be able to bring it back? Oh, he went too far, over-rotated the thing. Kohler pulls straight ahead or almost straight ahead. Now he's just trying to recover it and get it in there without hitting any cones. And it looks like he's going to be able to do it. He's in clean. Wow, that was a very nice clean run. Cool. All right, Travis, man, you're hustling out there. 127, but you did catch one gate cone in there. So total time of 137, which puts you in lead right now by about 20 seconds. That's solid. I was going to say, what was, the, what was the most fun part of the thing? You were laying on it pretty hard over here coming through the slalom. Going with the rhythm and had her pinched the whole time. If there's one advantage or disadvantage this truck has, what do you think it is? I mean, you're up pretty high. Can you see the cones? Yeah, I could see the cones, but I just kind of, my eyes just let them go. But the advantage of this thing is I got a small VGT turbo, so it's spooled up pretty quick. Thank you, sir. Coming up next, Neil Torley and his white Ford. So Torley kind of walking it out of the hole here, taking a less aggressive approach than we saw earlier. And again, that may be part by design and also maybe part by the fact that the truck may not want to spool that well. 
So this is a very long truck, obviously, a full four-door cab on this thing. And uh-oh, he's getting things crossed up immediately here. Now he's going to get into that back-and-forth swinging motion. Tough to recover from, but it looks like he's making an uh, attempt to do just that. Man, with the amount of work these guys put in last night and during the day, he would love to come out of this looking strong. And, of course, he's one of the event leaders right now, recording the victory in the Fuel Economy Challenge. Here comes Torley now, working his way through the slalom. Made it through the first two gates cleanly. Ooh, this one might be trouble, though. And Torley carries some good speed into this last portion of the race. Now, again, long truck. He's going to have to start making that move early and, more importantly, the recovery end of things. And, oh, man, Torley making this one. Oh, man, he's sneaking it in there. Wow, well done, especially the last portion of that was pretty much picture perfect. Well, Neil Torley, man, it was a long day yesterday. You had the transmission out of this thing. You rebuilt it. You go 111, and it's a clean run. That is incredibly quick. Thank you so much. Yeah, I had a hard time spooling it, so it really was a disadvantage to me, and I knew I had the skill. It's just the turbos wouldn't light, so we played it safe, held out some power for the drag race, and we'll see what happens later on today. The part you really nailed is that 90-degree turn at the left. This is a long truck, and that's a long trailer, and you hit that pivot point perfectly. Yeah, that was uh, my key thing I didn't want to make a mistake on. Well done, man. That's going to be a very difficult time to beat today. Thank you so much. And there goes Cater, stands on the gas, still laboring out of the hole a little bit. Feeds the power to the truck. Now is the time where he's going to have to really kind of use his own intuition to get this thing straightened out and backed up. Well, right now he's about to back through with no trailer mirrors, no mirrors whatsoever, so that's going to be interesting to see how he does. He's uh, literally just going over his shoulder, but he's, he's uh, backing up remarkably straight on. See, uh, it's not wonky yet. No cones in danger. Wow, pretty impressed for not having mirrors. Gear starts to feed the power to it. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> heavy on the brakes. Saw the weight all really all transfer to the back of that truck. So Keter, again, big speed here through the chicane. He's going to hit it with the power one more time. This is where Neil, Neil Torley really shined last time through, and Keeter needs to do the same if he wants to hang in there. This is looking like a great run so far. I've not seen any cones hit. No penalties incurred to this point, but it can all go really pear-shaped once you get toward this backup area. Wow, he came into the stop box hot, that's for sure. Hey, KJ, any cones on your end of the course? Absolutely no cones on this end of the course, Sean, and I'm I'm impressed. I'm not going to say I'm surprised. I'm very impressed at a guy who can drive a truck backwards with no mirrors like that. That was that was pretty that was pretty cool. Yeah, he had a, a 118, which is... Uh, uh, I think second place right now, the fact that he didn't have mirrors. Uh, super clean run. It's fun to watch. Passes along to Charlie Keeter for now, and, and specified for now he's my hero. That's subject to change. Well, Charlie Keeter with the we don't need no stinking mirrors philosophy out here. You go 118, man. That puts you number two right now. All right. Good deal. Uh, surprisingly, there's a lot of weight back there. Ray McClellan will be next to attack the course. And look at that, smoldering the tires with 11,000 pounds strapped to the back of the truck. McClellan now sets himself up for the backing portion. McClellan with the... Four-door cab truck does not have quite as much wheelbase to work with, or to fight against, I should say, as Neil Torley did with his class-leading one minute and 11 second run. The rig looks pretty good. The chrome wheels really shine up nice as he makes his way back through this section. And again, just a picture-perfect setup here for McClellan. Tail of the tape. Let's see how lazy the truck is coming out of this section. Oh, it is not too happy about that program laboring hard. You can hear the turbo start to come up and he is really going to be trucking when he comes through here. Smooth as glass for McClellan. Now he's got the trailer perfectly set up. It's going to start already to kind of walk its way in instantly. Ooh, he may be one of the first guys to short side this thing. And McClellan comes in on the throttle. Oh, he minute five but a couple of penalties so your final score right now is a minute and 25 puts you in third yeah i mean i'm happy with that i don't want to be at the bottom but 
I made an argument in your behalf for style points for smoking the tires out of the hole, but they wouldn't go for it. <laughs> right, yeah. I tried to leave, get as much traction as I could, but the truck comes on pretty quick, so I had to work with that too. Okay, Nathan Stacy coming up next. Truck on course at 2007 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. No problem pulling the weight as he swings into the first left turn and whoa, ho, 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 he's living dangerously already. That was real close to a couple of cones just on the first left turn. Stacy now gets the truck squared up and he's going to head into the backing section. A lot of steering inputs being made already. That's normally not a great sign and that thing is heading off into no man's land. So Stacy is going to bring it back around one more time, get it squared up again. The one thing he's not done here, he hasn't lost his cool, made any rash decisions, and that's what you can't do. We often see guys kind of lose it in here, and once you start to lose it, that's when the cones really start hitting the ground. Stacy keeping the composure, keeping the skill level up, and he is cleanly making his way through the backing area. Can he get the trailer swung to the left? No. Trailer has gone to the right. The only way he's going to get out of this is if he actually just does a giant U-turn. There is no rule against doing this. The only problem is you're driving a bunch of extra distance and you're eating up a bunch of valuable time. You see Stacy, one last goose of the throttle there, and he's going to give this thing full right rudder and swing it all the way around. That five-ton trailer hanging off the back of his truck. You can see how hard the truck working to get things moving. This is a spot where he can make it some time. Comes into the fast section. Oh, he gets a cone right into it. So he has got a cone penalty there. He is now coming through the chicane. Stacy going to make that right-hander right here, and he gets another cone with the inside tires. Oh, man. Very tough break for Nate. Now he comes into the stop box, and he does it cleanly. This is a defining moment for him. If he puts this thing, if he sticks the landing, he's going to make himself maybe uh, some decent time here. If he can't get it in, it is going to cost him even more. And Stacy looking like he's going to miss it. So Stacy is going to put it in drive and pull the truck ahead. Nathan doing the right thing here, not going to try to force it through where it doesn't belong. And Nathan Stacy starting to creep in on it right now. You see Sean Holman with the buzzer up, and Stacy is praying for this thing to be over. He is almost done now, and he's going to square it up again to make sure he does not hit any more cones. And Nathan Stacy in reverse, creeping backwards, driving, 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 and finally, mercifully, it is over. Stacy completes his run. I don't know, I just, I got nervous, got thinking about it, and it is what it is, I guess. It's our time. We messed up on the dyno. It's time to prove something. And you heard the motor clean up a little bit. Yeah, he is off with power. And again, those, uh-oh. Ferguson has completely missed one of the gates. He actually turned in through the middle of the course there. That is going to be a major time penalty for him. That is an unfortunate break right off the bat. Diesel power content director Sean Holman often refers to the cones as third graders. And if that was the case, David Ferguson would be facing a lengthy prison sentence. So Ferguson has worked his way cleanly back through there, and he is going to be uh, Mighty disappointed. If the rest of this run is as clean as that section, he is going to be very disappointed when he gets the news that he missed a gate and hit a cone. Oh, man. And again, the truck really not too happy until those turbos start to light. And boy, are they lit now. Oh, man. Coming like a freight train here through the chicane. Huge amount of speed. Whoa, he's got the thing. All he almost jackknifed the thing. Totally crossed up. Now he's going to come back. The good news for him is the trailer ended up in the right spot, and it is inching its way towards the box. And Ferguson, able to stick the landing, so to speak, gets in the gate cleanly. But that initial turn in is going to be bad news for him. It was 147, but there was a penalty. When you came off the starting line, you were a little early into that turn out there and actually missed the gate. But, man, once this thing got warmed up, though, coming through that chicane section, it was really carrying some big speed. Yeah, it's, uh, it, 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 that big charger takes a little bit to get going, but uh, that 30 jet really woke it up. This all was just, uh, I can't blame anybody else but me on this one. It's absolutely all me. I'll tell you one, one question I have for you. This thing's got those m &H tires on the corners, which are certainly designed for the drag strip. I'm sure you're looking forward to that. I'm, it's, I'm going to let it eat there. So Neil Torley and his lifted Ford took first place in the trailer towing obstacle course with Charlie Keeter and Ray McClellan rounding up the top three.
Make sure you join us next time for the 8 Mile Trailer Tow, one of the most punishing events in the entire Diesel Power Challenge. This one's crazy. Horsepower and torque at work.